I'm Dr. John Peterson, a member of the Borland Gruber Clinic, and today we're going to talk about gastroparesis. Gastroparesis is a chronic and very debilitating condition that affects the stomach, how the stomach accepts a meal, digests the meal, and makes the meal leave the stomach in a coordinated fashion. And people with gastroparesis have lost that ability to empty from their stomach properly. As a result, they have a lot of symptoms, symptoms that can be somewhat acute and others that go on for years at a time. This can be nausea, the feeling of fullness after a meal, abdominal pain, bloating, gas, belching, regurgitating, and, and at times very debilitating weight loss. The first step would be to take a careful history, examine the patient carefully, and then consider an upper endoscopy to examine the stomach and see if there's something inherently wrong with it. At times we'll also do an ultrasound or a CAT scan to look at the rest of the abdominal contents and make sure that they're in good working order. If we find that the stomach looks good and there's no inflammation, there's no ulceration or polyp or mass or obstruction to the outflow of the stomach, that's when we take our next step and that's to do what's called a gastric emptying study. That's a study done by the nuclear medicine department of a radiology center. And once we have that information, if we find that the stomach is significantly delayed in how it works, then we have the diagnosis of gastroparesis. This is a disorder that commonly is seen in diabetics, very commonly. Probably 40 to 50% of diabetics at some time in their lives will have a component of a gastric emptying disorder. Once we've confirmed that they truly have gastroparesis, be it on a diabetic nature or a so-called idiopathic nature, we then try medications. We change their diets uh, to see if that'll have some benefit, but in my experience, diet has not made a big difference in the treatment of gastroparesis. And now the option that we have is gastric stimulation or gastric pacing. And we have just recently started inserting these gastric pacemakers at Baptist Hospital downtown with the assistance of a very fine laparoscopic surgeon who actually places the pacemaker. This is the so-called Entera gastric stimulating device. This is its actual size and shape and dimension. You can see it's very thin, very low profile, uh, weighs only a couple of ounces. This is inserted by the surgeon at Baptist Downtown into a small pouch on the abdominal wall. The leads that are attached to the pacemaker are then placed in the lower part of the stomach itself. And this computerized module shows me exactly how that particular generator is working, how much time it has taken off its battery supply, how much voltage it's putting out with it each stimulation to contract the stomach, the frequency, the resistance. All of these things can be very carefully monitored within this computerized module. Anywhere from 50 to 75% of patients that are paced will have improvement in their overall symptoms. Their quality of life will improve, the frequency of the nausea and vomiting spells will go down, the episodes requiring emergency room visits and hospitalizations are drastically reduced, uh, office visits, the use of other medications for pain and nausea reduced, we know this. It's, it's been a national fact that this has shown to be a very positive experience. So we're very happy to be part of that experience.